Welcome back to another Cabral House Call. It's a very special Total Wellness Tuesday, and we're gonna answer your questions all related to getting well and achieving optimal health and wellness. First question today is, why doesn't my doctor run functional medicine tests by Alice? So what I'd like to talk about is this. Conventional medicine doctors, which means your typical primary care physician or MD, which is just conventional medicine, allopathic medicine, different names for it, for a lot of the times they can't actually get those to be pushed through health insurance because a lot of functional medicine tests are not diagnostic based, which means that if you were to run, let's say, an organic acids test, there is no disease that comes out of that. They could look for high yeast and fungal-based markers. They could look for bacterial-based markers, mitochondrial function, but it's not gonna tell you that you have hypercholesterolemia or hypertension or any of those things, an autoimmune-based disease. So what I would say is sometimes their hands are tied and they can't really get you to do labs that your health insurance is not gonna pay for. So if it's non-diagnostic based, then you're most likely going to have to either pay for that out of your own pocket, although it is absolutely worth it, or you're gonna to have to find what's called an ICD-9 code and now they're getting updated so by the time, or when you watch this, it's probably not gonna be an ICD-9 code. Uh, it's another type of code and all that means is that you're doctor has found cause for this specific type of disease and now we want to test for it. But just keep in mind that functional medicine tests run the gambit, meaning like you could absolutely get your food sensitivities tested if your doctor will allow for that. You could test vitamin D levels. You could maybe even do a hormone-based stress level. Typically though it's through blood and not saliva. So, and we like to do the saliva because it's just more accurate at a tissue level. So, what I would say is functional medicine and integrative medicine, they're one and the same for the labs. Like, I'm a functional medicine practitioner. I run all of the labs, every single one that a medical doctor or a primary care would run, but I also run food sensitivity, organic acid, stool-based testing, parasite testing, hormone testing, thyroid testing, sleep test, all of these specific things because I don't have to try to put it through insurance. So just keep in mind that look at two branches of medicine and you can absolutely use both. Primary care physician or allopathic medicine, those are acute based issues and like annual checkups. You get your labs run. And then your naturopathic doctor or functional medicine doctor or just natural health practitioner in general, they can run all of your non-diagnostic functional medicine labs such as hair tissue mineral analysis or hormone testing, those types of things. So I would just look at it as two different branches and that for the most part, a lot of MDs, they can't even prescribe these tests because again, they're not gonna be covered by health insurance. Hopefully that answers your question and we'll link up the labs, of course, that I recommend for functional medicine testing and then you can do your own research and decide if it's the right test for you. The second question today is, all right, so Malcolm is asking, is Ayurvedic medicine applicable in the 21st century? So what I would say is this, Ayurvedic medicine has stood the test of time. It was the original form of medicine. It's been around for at least 6,000 years. Many people feel 10,000 years. And it was what was eventually blended and added to traditional Chinese medicine, Greek medicine, all the way down the line. And believe it or not, a lot of allopathic medicine does come from Ayurvedic medicine. More than half of our all pharmaceutical drugs come from plants studied in nature, meaning they're using extracts, patent extracts from these plants. When I was on multiple internships in India, there was never a time I was not there that other pharmaceutical companies had reps there as well, working with the indigenous people there. Uh, indigenous, I hate that word. We're just gonna talk about like Ayurvedic doctors, like best of the best, studying plants for their medicinal uses. Now, keep in mind, they work just as plants themselves, but you cannot create a patent, which is gonna create a billion dollar drug without using some type of extract and patent, because you can't just use the plant itself, because of course that's not patentable, but the plant itself does work, just like rice works, like a statin works, just a statin you can patent, and red yeast rice you can't. Why not use red yeast rice, I'm not sure, but um, anyway, you can go about it in your own way. So yes, Ayurvedic medicine is, I would say, not only applicable to the 21st century, I would say it's even more so now because people have become so imbalanced in Ayurvedic medicine, all it does is talk about find your balances, find what you're naturally prone to getting into an imbalance, 
and then use the anti that, meaning like if you're too vata based, too ectomorph based, use some of those kapha based properties to help balance the vata. I'm gonna talk more about this topic, I'm not gonna get into it all in this question today, but yes, studying Ayurvedic medicine, it is the plethora of knowledge that everyone does need to study and look into, especially health practitioners. All right, next question. All right, so Wes asks, can I get a parasite from eating raw fish or meat? And the answer is yes, absolutely. And let's take it one step further. You can get a parasite from salad bars, from literally from the water using the vegetables, all of those things. So you do have to be careful. Now, you can't live your whole life worrying if you're worried that you're gonna get a parasite, but you can take certain precautions, and that's making sure that if you're eating sushi, that you're getting it from a reputable place. And a lot of sushi places, actually, the fish has been frozen, for deep frozen for at least three days, which is gonna kill most parasites. So you're kinda clear in that regard. Freezing in general will kill most parasites. Things like pork, pork is more of that dangerous base one, where when eaten undercooked, and sometimes even fully cooked, but let's just go with the undercooked, you can actually get a parasite, uh, pork tissue or porcine tissues actually allows for more parasites to not actually be destroyed or killed. Especially like, well, and, and bacteria, I should just say bacteria in general, like pneumonia-based bacteria. So when in doubt, you really should make sure that it's warm, the meat um, that you're cooking and the fish that you are cooking. But I do eat some sushi myself, and so you just have to make sure that you're getting it from a reputable place. And the truth is that you need to make sure that you have enough hydrochloric acid in your stomach, enough stomach acid. If you're eating raw food, raw fish, uh, raw meat, that do make sure you're at least supplementing with ginger or hot ginger tea to get those digestive juices going, or hydrochloric acid, betaine hydrochloride, or betaine HCL and pepsin, those are nutritional supplements. I do that when I'm traveling overseas to make sure that I do not get all of this bacteria that my body's not used to or potential parasites. It's just a smart thing to do. All these people talk about how you should be limiting stomach bacteria or stomach acid, absolutely not. Stomach acid is what protects you. If you don't have stomach acid, good luck trying to prevent that bacteria from getting into your system. It's something that you absolutely do need. If you have heartburn, we'll teach you how to correct those underlying imbalances so that you no longer have it. If you're on hydrochloric acid blockers, I'm telling you, the repercussions of that are very, very dangerous. I'm gonna talk about that in an upcoming episode. Thank you for joining me today on Cabral House Call. I'm gonna be back real soon answering your questions. So just go to steamcabral.com forward slash ask Cabral. Ask your question right there, I will answer it. Talk with you soon. Thank you for just tuning into the Cabral Concepts. We've been getting a lot of questions lately about what next, what can I do next? And so what I'd like to say is if you wanna take your wellness, weight loss, or anti-aging goals to that next level, I'd say this, we have three options for people to start with, and you can just see if it's the right fit for you. What we do is we have the ability for you to simply click the start hair button on the stephencabral.com website, and you can choose three options, the best one that fits your needs. The first one is simply getting more details on how we work with clients in our wellness practice. So it could be options on functional medicine lab testing, it could just be on free recipes, we have our exact workout templates, everything that you need to just get started. The second the second level is completing the Dr. Cabral detox. Anywhere from 7, 14, or 21 days, it's the absolute best way to lose weight and improve your wellness. And we guarantee it. I mean, there's very few people that do guarantee their work. We absolutely guarantee that you will get results with this. And the third way is that you can do complete personalized wellness planning. And that includes choosing one of the functional medicine labs that we have on the website, or multiple if you would like, getting those labs shipped to you, completing the lab right at home, and then we send you in about three weeks after that a complete personalized wellness plan that includes everything our wellness clients and weight loss clients get at our Boston practice. So all you have to do is simply go to stephencabral.com, click on the start hair button, and you can get started and choose the level that works for you.